The New York Times, check this out, publishing our buddy Steve Ratner's list of the 10 charts that define the political and economic landscape in 2023. That's in the paper this morning. Steve writes in the piece, quote, the economy and inflation remain front of mind until the war in Gaza grabbed headlines and the world's attention all while Donald Trump's candidacy loomed in the background. Join us now with three of the charts included in his 2023 roundup. Former Treasury official, Morning Joe economic analyst, Steve Ratner. Steve, it is great to see you over at the Southwest Wall, your posts there. Let's start with chart one that you've chosen out of your 10 that defined the year, and that is falling inflation, rising incomes. Yeah, so I'm going to focus mostly on the economy and the implications politically, <laughs> potentially for President Biden today, Willie. So on inflation, as everybody knows, inflation soared up, got to 9.1 percent at its peak in 2022. But here's what's happened in 2023. Inflation, which is this black line, subsided, 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 got down to 3.1% at the end of the year. But here's what maybe most people don't know, that within inflation, the price of goods with television sets, toys, bicycles, things like that, has been basically zero for the last several months. And that's because during the pandemic, people bought a lot of stuff, drove the prices up. But now, as people found presumably over the holidays, there were some bar relative bargains, at least, to be had. So inflation has actually turned way down. But what people probably don't know is what the effect has been on their incomes. I think most Americans still feel, and I understand why they feel it, that they've been left behind by inflation in terms of their purchasing power and their ability to buy things and provide for their families. But in actual fact, since the beginning of the Biden administration, for the average American, typical American, their income, even adjusting for inflation, is up 6.6%. That's not nothing. Obviously, we'd like it to be more, but it's not nothing. But here's what's even more surprising, if you're not surprised yet, which is that people at the bottom actually did better in relative terms than people at the top. People at the bottom saw their inflation-adjusted incomes go up by almost 14%, while people at the top saw their inflation-adjusted uh, incomes go up by 1.6%. And we don't wish ill on anyone. We certainly want people everywhere to do well. But the idea that people at the bottom in the last three years have done better percentage-wise than people at the top should be very good news to Americans. That's good news, Steve. I want to ask you, too, about gas prices. The, that's the gas and groceries are the one that smack most of us in the face because you watch it, the register rolling up. Gas prices were over 5 bucks in June of 2022, now around three eleven a gallon this morning. Yeah, no, gas prices have come way down, and that three eleven may even still seem high to people. But again, on an inflation-adjusted basis, it's at or below the average, really, since OPEC started doing its thing. And food prices, which will also surprise people, were only up 2.8 percent last year, so even less than the overall inflation rate. So as we move, Steve, to your next chart about this economy defying expectations, you talk to people who may even not be big fans of Joe Biden as we close the year last year, and they say, wow, the Dow was up over 37,000 from Wall Street's point of view. But for more importantly, for people, regular folks out working, unemployment is down. What else are you looking at there? Yeah, this was an economy and a stock market that surprised really all the experts. I don't think very many, if any, quite predicted this. So we'll look at a consensus of, of uh, economists. And you'll see that at the beginning of the year, they were looking at a very little sliver of growth for our economy. Some were predicting recession, but not a lot of growth. What happened, and this includes the fourth quarter, which we'll get the actual number, but we have good estimates, 3% growth, very, a very solid, very, very solid performance for the economy. Then you take a look at unemployment. People thought, economists thought it was going to edge up to close to 5% as the Federal Reserve raised rates and, and forced the economy to slow down. In fact, it's just under 4%. It's still more or less where it's been for several, several years. If you look tied to that is jobs growth, of course. Consensus, for the reasons I said, expecting a slower economy, thought we would actually lose a few jobs per month. In fact, we gained almost 250,000 jobs a month through uh, November. We'll get one more number on Friday of this week. And then lastly, the S&P, as you mentioned, Willie, you know, nobody can predict the S&P. Let's just be honest about that for starters. But they were looking at 5 percent, the strategists, and instead they got 25 percent. Wow. Now, for Joe Biden's reelection, let's just look ahead to what people think about 2024. So there, if you take this all together, they're basically looking for an economy that is still not in recession, not growing as fast as it was, 
unemployment ticks up a bit, job growth a bit slower, and the stock market, who knows, but they're predicting a small increase. The point being that as Biden goes into his re-election, the consensus among economists is that we have achieved something that looks like a soft landing, a little bit slower growth, a little bit less job growth as a result for now, but not a big recession, a bit of a tailwind for Joe Biden as he goes into his re-election. Which leads us to your third star chart, Steve, which is the and yet. Despite all of that good economic news you just presented, President Biden remains historically unpopular. I think and yet, Willie, is a great way to introduce any conversation about the president's uh, approval rating relative to his economy. So these are the, all the presidents since Jimmy Carter. You can see Joe Biden up here at 39 percent. We all know that. Some numbers are even lower, but, or, uh, but in that range. Lowest of any president since somewhere before Carter. I don't know where. But even people like Carter and Reagan, who we're going to talk about in more detail in a second, were sitting at 54 percent. Uh, Obama at 43 percent, Trump at 45 percent. So a very strange situation for uh, the president, given the numbers I just showed you. And obviously, there's a war going on in Gaza. But, you know, uh, Jimmy Carter faced a hostage crisis that was already underway at this point in his reelection. He still sat at 54 percent. So let's look at the economic statistics. So why might Biden's be, uh, approval rating be so low? Well, really not because of the economic performance. At 3.1 percent, it's a little bit higher than some of these presidents, but kind of in line. But look at Jimmy Carter, 13.3 percent inflation and his 54 percent approval rating. And then if you look at unemployment, the 3.7 percent for Biden that I mentioned, again, this is lower. Trump was at 3.6, but this is basically lower than every president. And Carter was facing 6.0. Now, Joe likes to talk about Reagan's re-election, where he was at 54 percent. He had 3.8 percent inflation, higher than this president's, and he had 8.3 percent unemployment. Mm. And he was obviously re-elected in 1984 in a landslide. So this remains the big disconnect for the political scientists and other pundits to try to untangle, which is why, with the economy so good, is Biden doing so poorly, at least by these public opinion polls? And a big frustration for the Biden White House because voters say the economy is the number one issue for them. They always do. And yet, even with this data, the president is unpopular. Steve Ratner, thanks so much. Fascinating stuff. And Steve's full analysis of all the charts in the New York Times this morning. Steve, thank you.